Hello, everyone. We are here for our spoiler chat about all things The Suicide Squad. Not Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad. A very different film. Hi, Merrick. We got Emma. We got Bailey. Um, and I'm going to go a little behind the scenes here and say maybe we're going to be a little loopy on this. I don't know. Maybe we just did a live <laughs> watch along of the movie we're about to talk about. <laughs> And uh, maybe my wife just finally closed the door. She's like, I don't care about you talking. And then it's like, wow, he's he's talking a lot. It's like, man, it's uh, just yes. been hours of Eric talking. <laughs> right. I, mm, this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to keep it together. <laughs> so uh, once more, spoiler warning: if you have not seen the Suicide Squad, we're about to ruin the whole thing for you. So go see it. It's in theaters. It's on HBO Max. You got some choices on how you can watch it. So go watch it and then come back and watch this video. Uh, unless you don't care about us spoiling it. All right, you've been warned. Three, two, one. We are in full spoiler zone now. Uh, all right, let's go, guys. Uh, first, just overall thoughts. Let's just, you know, I know we said this very briefly at the end of the watch along, uh, but what were your overall thoughts on The Suicide Squad? Emma, I'll start with you. I absolutely loved it and it's one of those films that the further away I get from it the more I love it because I had a chance to see it early which was super fun I saw it in IMAX uh at Century City AMC so it's not actually an IMAX screen it's not like going to City Walk which is like that's the real deal IMAX experience here in Los Angeles but I was so impressed by how funny the script was and that's what makes me want to go back and watch it again and again and again because I've now watched it twice I watched it at the early screening and then I watched it during our watch along and I still think that there are jokes that I missed because it's non-stop I mean when we did our watch along I think it was Spencer pointed out that the movie doesn't stop for anything like we we'd been watching for probably 20 minutes and it had been non-stop action they don't get bogged down with too much exposition they don't feel the need to like go into great detail about who every single one of these characters are. They're like, no, we wrote these characters, their visual appearance and their dialogue speaks for itself. And we're just going to let this be and show you the story that we're trying to tell. And it's incredibly effective. I'm a huge fan of um, James Gunn's work in general. And it was really fun with this because this film felt so, so distinctively James Gunn. It was very reminiscent of something um, like earlier in his career, something like a, a super, which was a very dark and violent, but hilarious superhero film. And this feels like a less effed up <laughs> version of that with a lot more money. Right. Considerably higher budget, I would say. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just a little, just a little. Bailey, what are your uh, your overall thoughts on the Suicide Squad? Well, I was at the same screening Emma was, so I've had a little bit of time to like stew on it and stuff. And honestly, like I walked out of that screening just sort of amazed by what I had just seen and watching it again, feeling a little less stressed out about <laughs> yeah. Sebastian's safety the whole time so I could really <laughs> focus more on the movie. Um, same takeaway. I honestly deeply enjoyed it. It's uh, It's funny. It's action-packed you don't feel the length of time that it is like my issue with these long long movies is there's always like 30 minutes that I feel like they really could have cut out in mm -hmm. this one I can't really think of 30 minutes I'd want to get rid of like I enjoyed every minute of it and there were parts maybe that I think I would have changed to improve on it slightly but nothing so much that it brought down my overall extremely positive opinion of the movie yeah uh yeah I'm obviously I'm with you guys uh, I love the movie uh, yeah, I saw it a few weeks ago at a, a screening, and I kind of was the same thing as you said, Emma. Like, the more I thought about it, the more I liked it. Uh, I think it really does kind of get to blend uh, all things James Gunn, because, you know, clearly most people know him from the Guardians movies, and we know he's great with a wacky group of characters and, uh, you know, superheroes that are slightly a little off-kilter, but here he's also getting to do, like, R-rated James Gunn, uh, you know, like Super and Slither and even the trauma stuff he did back yeah. in the day. And so that's just so cool. Like, it's just so great to sort of see him get to do all, all the facets of his brain, you know, up there, I feel like, in that movie. Yeah. Uh, and the running time thing also, yeah, it's like, I think this movie's like two hours, 15 minutes. It's not um, like that. And not only does it fly by, but also I'm actually impressed it's quote unquote only two hours, 15 minutes, because there is a ton of characters, even with the massacre at the top, there's still a ton of characters. So much happens yeah. in those two hours and 14 minutes, but none of it feels rushed. And I think yeah. that that is one of the real strengths of this movie is again, there is so much action, but it's incredibly well-paced. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, it really does uh, just move so well. And uh, yeah, I've, I've seen it three times now, including our watch along and uh, thoroughly entertaining each time and just so crowd pleasing. Like I actually, I watched it at City Walk last night uh, nice. and uh, yeah, people were, uh, were, were very, very uh, involved in all that. Uh, let's go through some of the uh, sort of different aspects of the movie though. There are a ton of characters as we just mentioned in this movie. Some are on screen for a few minutes, some are there for the whole time or some are there for you know a good amount of time. Uh, who's, who's your favorite? Who's your standard? Out. Oh, I see where William's uh, loyalty lies with the <laughs> screenshot we're getting at the moment. <laughs> I mean, how could you not? But I have to say that I think for me, and I, uh, I mean, I would die. I would die for King Shark. I, I love him so much. He is so pure, must protect at all costs, even though it was made very clear that he was extremely strong. The many times wherein it seemed as though he could have possibly perished, I was heartbroken. I, I I don't know what I would have done if King Shark died. I would probably riot. But the real standouts for me are honestly Bloodsport and Ratcatcher too, because I think that a lot of the success of the movie really hinges on the relationship between those characters and you caring about the two of them. Because Ratcatcher 2 is very much like the emotional intelligence of the movie in a way. And this whole sort of message of like, oh, if rats, the lowliest of creatures, have a purpose, then so too do all of we, is this beautiful <laughs> metaphor with the Suicide Squad, who are these criminals who are kind of being pushed out of society. So, and I think, again, it was so wonderful to see Idris Elba, who's had a, like, very, very prolific career and has been really good in a lot of bad movies, be yeah. really good in a really good movie and it really does hinge on you believing what that character is about and going on that journey with him yeah yeah uh yeah, they were they were both great i do really like the dynamic between them uh bailey uh what is who's your favorite i mean i agree Ratcatcher 2 and Bloodsport, their dynamic is such is such the like heart of the movie. Fully agree. I also think Bloodsport's dynamic with Peacemaker is one of the key things that makes this movie really sing. Like that horrifying yeah. massacre they do together in the jungle where they're just trying to one up each other. That that vibe the whole time of just like that squabbling. It really like helps drive the whole thing along. I also want to like shout out Rick Flag. I think he's such a I character in the first agree. <laughs> yes. I, so I have to tell you, uh, he was so whatever in Suicide Squad, no yeah. the in the front of it, <laughs> right? That I kind of forgot he was in the movie. Exactly. And then, yeah, like, I thought this was yeah. the first time we were seeing him. <laughs> yeah. <that's, laughs> and then watching it, I was like, oh, yeah, he was in the first one, but he was so good in this one. Joel Kinnaman really did that character a lot of justice and that's one of the more difficult characters to play i think yeah. because he's not the wacky character yeah but he like he had these subtle like nuances to the way he delivered his lines and the way he held himself where he was just he was funny he was funny and likable and it, i was i was sad when peacemaker did that to him mm -hmm. <laughs> i was as well uh uh, maybe I'm telegraphing my answer to the next question, but first I'll answer this one with favorite character. For me, uh, I will split the difference here and say one of my favorites is a one you guys have been mentioning, which is Ratcatcher as well. Uh, she just, uh, there's just something great about that character. I mean, I tweeted earlier, joking but not joking, that she's like a role model because she's empathetic, empathetic and loving, uh, but also likes to sleep all the time. Yeah. Which is one of things again, I, I would, I aspire to, but I no, there's just. Yeah, there's something just such so endearing about it. Uh, God, I'm going to massacre her last name, Daniela Melashore, Melacor, Melacor. Yeah, Melacor, uh, for, I think. forgive. Yes, uh, she's she's great. Like you know, just there's something you know she's playing it in this sort of uh, underplaying way that really works, um, and yeah, really does work as a sort of you, you just feel for her and that the fact that she wants to connect with Bloodsport and she wants to connect with King Shark. She's just a, yes. a loving character. Um, and then I'll also say I, I do I still have to say though. How, Harley, which I going into I, it, I loved her anyway. Yeah. Uh, but this was great. You know? I just love Margot Robbie in that part. Yeah. She even in Suicide Squad, the OG, I don't want to spend time bashing it. I did not enjoy it, but I really enjoyed her as Harley while still feeling she got nothing to do and not caring for the way that character was written. And then to see or her dress. take or dress. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then to see her get to take on that role again in Birds of Prey. And she was just so fabulous. And 
even though obviously the, the script for this was almost certainly done before Birds of Prey ever came out, so it doesn't really necessarily have a direct influence on it, she felt very true to who that character was. And it was just really cool to see a continuation of this character who I, I, I mean, I love from Batman the Animated Series, which I adored as a child. And then to just see her, you know, in this great, in two really great live action iterations has been really thrilling. And um, she's just, yeah, she's so funny. The way she delivers the dialogue with absolute sincerity just kills me. Yeah, <laughs> she no, seems she's... like she loves playing the character yeah. and she's having a fun time the whole time. And it like really shines through how much she cares about the character and it like plays in her performance. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think the same thing. And also, yeah, she, she's so great. She commits so fully to it. And, you know, this movie does kind of a risky thing by giving her this sort of side story in the middle, which on one hand, like, let's be practical here. Part <laughs> of it feels like, hey, she's the top build person. She's a big yes. deal in this character. Let's give her this, which could have gone wrong, but it's so great. Yeah. Like, you know, she gets a standout action scene. She gets that awesome monologue, where, which I love because they don't have to say Joker's name, but she's obviously yes. talking about him yeah. uh, in such a great way to show, like you said, her growth <laughs> that she's yeah. moved on from him. Well and also the thing that I really appreciated about that whole side story with Harley is, again, you know, she's she's top build. She's a character that's already starred in a movie of her own. And we're very familiar with this character. We have a, an emotional attachment to her already. And when she has this side story, the thing I really want to applaud is uh, the female gaze that is mm -hmm. in that entire sequence where she, like meets the president who wants to marry her and he's emerging from the bathtub with his like eight pack and his tiny <laughs> towel and then the fact that again you're just it's all and it's just like Harley taking uh, taking everything for herself so mm -hmm. it's like when he brings up oh you know hey I want to marry you and she's like really and he just kind of keeps talking and she's like I mean damn you are so hot let's go <laughs> and then she shoots him when he starts being like, yeah, we're going to murder some children. So it's just, right. I, it, it's just the whole, the whole thing is so incredibly well done. And I was crying laughing the first time I saw it when he in the middle of his like big sort of villain speech just gets shot. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, yeah, you wonder, is she going to be like, you know, you know, she's going to turn on him, but maybe she'll be undercover for a little while. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> then, no, she no. doesn't do undercover. Absolutely nope. not. Nope. nope. And yeah. I have to say, I was delighted that we got the um, Xenia on a top uh, approach to death when yes. she uh, strangled the guy with her thighs. Like, I love a good mm. thigh strangling. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that because uh, I was also thinking of Bond just as far as the fact that she got to be kind of James Bondy by sleeping yeah. with the bad guy and yeah. then killing the bad Yes, guy, I love know? that. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm conflicted. No, no. Uh, you know, Again, it's... like everything was on her terms yeah. and that was just thrilling to see. Yeah, no, uh, so so awesome. Uh, we, uh, of course, Suicide Squad, that means death, death, death. I mean, this one <laughs> way more than the first one. Uh, so so which death hit you hardest, guys? Uh, who, 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 who? Hurts. <laughs> birds, the birds. Every bird in the movie. Which James Gunn has now had a tweet about. He does not hate birds <laughs> because <laughs> prove it. He, he, Twitter's coming at him about this. <laughs> yeah, I was a little sad and not. I'm not surprised, but a little sad when Savant died. Um, just because I love Michael Rooker. Uh, he's fun to party with at conventions, and uh, yeah, so. I have I, I had some feelings about that, but as we discussed during the watch along, we do know that James Gunn uh, loves Michael Rooker and also loves to kill him, so that was not super surprising. Right. Um, right. Yeah, that was that was a little sad. <laughs> I felt I felt for our poor um, uh, javelin friend. You know, it seemed like he just <laughs> yes. he really he really had a purpose. For that javelin. His purpose was the javelin. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Although Harley's line about uh, uh, when he's like, oh, women all love my the accent. And she's like, yeah, because we don't got none in America. We don't got none. Uh, made me laugh so hard. <laughs> so well. So well. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. Um, and, and when he did die before he told her what, who or what she had to carry the javelin for. Yes. Just start hitting him in the face. It really was Chekhov's <laughs> javelin. Like, <laughs> they introduced that right at the beginning and they just carried it through it, the whole thing. And it paid off. It paid it really off. Did. Also, it really did. you know what? We got to pour one out for Milton. <laughs> Ah, uh, that is one of the funniest sequences I can think of in recent movie history. The the Milton back and forth after his death. Uh, yeah, that I mentioned this to you guys earlier, but I I thought about it hours after some of us laying in bed, and I started laughing about the Milton back and forth. There's been a guy named Milton with us right. the whole time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was freaking amazing. Uh, Bailey, anyone else jump out for you amongst the uh, the sad to see them go? Honestly, I got <sighs> polka dot man. Oh, I know. Like he was there. Given the massacre of all the silly, like throwaway seeming people at the beginning, it really seemed like he wasn't long for this world. But he had a whole emotional <laughs> arc. He grew throughout the movie. His actor was so good because he just has this <sighs> like perfect combination of like crazy looking murderer but also real like like emotion on his face like real yeah. tragedy yeah. and pathos uh, like he yeah. just he just grew to make to become like just so much more than this joke character so when he finally got to be a hero and then got squooshed yeah. it was very sad it was fun too to see david dasmalshin play a very like since like he was still weird but he was so sincere and really did want to do good and davis david osmalson like often plays very creepy bad guys so it was cool to see him play just sort of a weirdo a weirdo nice boy <laughs> just nice yes. he got to drink some fernet have fun in a club yeah right. cool day for him honestly well, haunted by the mother um i I'll, I'll go my even though that one did make me sad too i'll go my number one would be rick flag who yeah going into the movie I did predict he died just because I, th I knew uh, James going to mention that he was in the movie. He was a, had a big part, but I thought, oh, I could see him dying in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, that's the strength of the movie is they made me care because, yeah, I just rewatched the first one and it's really not good at all. And there's a couple actors who still kind of managed to make the most of it, like Margot Robbie and even Will Smith, I thought was, you know, made yeah. that shot kind of stand out. But but I really like Joel Kinnaman. He's a great actor, but he had nothing to work with in that first movie. He had a line that we all make fun of with the Katana line he was saddled with. Um, so the fact that this movie made him so much more likable, so much more just like, yeah, like a character you could really connect to, gave him that little through line that he and Harley have this like friendship and bond now. Uh, so that when when he was fighting Peacemaker and I thought, oh, he's not going to get out of this, then I was like, no, I'm very sad he's not going to get out of this. So uh, kudos to Mr. Gunn and Mr. Kinnaman for that turnaround. Uh, some of you, you, you kind of touched upon this uh, already, but is there anyone, um, if you want to name one, anyone else that the early deaths, the ones on the beach at the beginning, uh, you know, if there's anyone else you would have liked to have seen more of uh, beyond what you guys said, Savant, um, and I can't remember, uh, Javelin. Yeah. TDK. TDK. The detachable kid. Yeah. Nathan I'll Fillion's say, best role. Um, <laughs> so I, I get why they took him out early, but I, I, I wouldn't have minded seeing a couple more scenes of Captain Boomerang, only yeah. because he was another character in that first movie who managed to make the most, especially for Jai yes. Courtney, who, you know, I really liked on Spartacus and then was mm -hmm. not good and terribly miscast in Die Hard 5 and Terminator 5 and all these bad part fives. But then mm -hmm. he, it's like, oh, give him a character, like a weird character. And he actually made something work with that. So I was a little sad he didn't get a little more to do, even though I understood why they wanted to bring him back to take someone out you knew in the, the opening of the movie. It's yeah. sort of like, like, um, made you lose your balance a little because you're like oh well this guy's gonna stick around a bit like but then yeah we got him right away mm -hmm. i thought his presence in this was very good it was like collectively much stronger in this movie than it was in the first one like he was on screen so much less but he just had he, he just had so much more presence I can't, I can't really explain it other than i think just uh, it's a better movie the writing is really good <laughs> yeah, the writing is like stronger. That, again it's like one of the things that is so so good about this movie is that the characters just have to be. They just have to be. They just have to say their lines. There's a there's a real sense of fun and like it really feels like everybody got to put on superhero costumes and play. Yeah. But also yeah. there were machine guns. Like, <laughs> <laughs> having a blast. In some cases, quite literally. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, it, it just it feels like I, I I would be I'd be sad I'd be surprised and sad if it turned out oh this was a really unhappy set because it just feels like oh this must have been a ball to shoot yeah like, must have been having a really good time um you know what is uh if, if there's like a highlight for you guys of course we've been naming some anyway but is there like a favorite scene favorite moment like that kind of uh, you think of first and foremost right now for this movie um. It turns out that uh, I am very into Harley Quinn uh, just beating the crap out of people in a prison. <laughs> <laughs> I also really appreciated in that scene that they went for this sort of Disney princess aesthetic almost mm. where when she was stabbing people instead of blood, it was like flowers and the music choice was so great. <laughs> and and again, there was, it was this highly choreographed fight that also was sort of reminiscent, I felt, of uh, some like Eastern cinema kind of action films like Korean and like Japanese films, uh, where she was like, the way she was using her environment, when she like strangled somebody with her dress, when she basically, there was something that she turned into like a garroting wire. That um, neck split was beautiful. Uh, I... I, I love a good uh, severed limb prosthetic situation. <laughs> the, oh uh, man, King Shark with the severed head in his mouth. Oh, that made me so happy. Like, with I the just, eyes moving. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I, I love the over the top kind yeah. of stuff like that. This just like commitment to being in this absolutely not real world and having fun with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that is ah, the, the, the head. The head thing is pretty great. Uh, Bailey, what's your what's your highlight? Big agree on the Margot Robbie fight scene. I think that uh, thus far between this and Birds of Prey, she is just like the most ass kicking mm -hmm. of any of the D anyone in the DCEU. Like she just gets the best fight scenes, yeah. and it's really rad that they're using Harley Quinn's like gymnast background to really like give her these mm -hmm. cool like tricks that she gets yeah. to do. I also think that the scene on the beach, like, I know it's the first scene, oh, but I yeah. think it does an amazing job establishing tone for the movie. Like, it's funny, it's gory, you, like, like characters, and then they're instantly taken away from you in increasingly ridiculous ways. I think it just sets up the movie for the success that follows. Uh, all that stuff is awesome, and it's funny when I, I almost had, like, it, it speaks to the movie that I, I'm like, what is my favorite scene as I was asking this question, and I'm running through all these moments, the ones you mentioned, and the blood sport, peacemaker, you know, uh, kind of showdown of who can do better with the killing, but I, honestly, I think if I had to pick a very favorite right now, it would be the Milton back and forth, okay. <laughs> because not, it, I love it so much, but also when I rewatched the movie, I realized, wow, they, he had to really commit to setting that up, so when I rewatch the movie, I'm hyper aware that Milton's on the roof with them when they're doing the whole, if you, yes. you die, to think her. He brought them Mil empanadas. I, brought, yes. yes. I remember when I was watching the screening originally, I was like, why did Milton go with them? And, yeah. and like the way that it paid off was incredible. Mil Milton but, is in slow-mo with the Pixies playing in the rain with them. Yes. Like, you know, it's like Milton's like, there for all along, that. <laughs> along the same lines, one of the funniest scenes in the movie is right after the sort of shoot off between um, Bloodsport and Peacemaker, where they're like, who can do better at this yeah. thing? And they show up to rescue uh, Rick Flagg, but he's actually hanging out with the resistance. And he's yes. like, this is the leader of the resistance. And she says, why didn't anybody alert me to you being here? And they're all just like, I don't know. There wasn't they were gone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, the, this is uh, the thing about this movie is there's so many, like we can so easily digress into it. And like, this was great. This is yeah. great there's a lot of great stuff here. But yeah, the Milton bit, uh, and the full commitment to the Milton bit uh, when I rewatch it, uh, I'm I'm all about. Milton that. was still with us. <laughs> Milton was still with us. What was Milton gonna do? Right. <laughs> Oh, poor Milton. Uh, oh, Poco Dot Man. Like them oh, from the no. start. Um, uh, is there a, uh, a highlight or depending on your uh, stomach, a low light or for grossest moment? Is there, because uh, this, this, this embrace its R rating. Ooh, ooh. The only one that I really closed my eyes for during our watch along is when you see the um i'm just saying look, look, there's there's milton i just saw that freeze frame oh, i was milton. like i was spotting milton on the side there the, <laughs> the one thing that i that i like knew was coming and i closed my eyes for was the bit where you like see the piece of tile in rick flag's heart and you mm -hmm. watch it like explode and stop that for whatever reason that's the one that got me where i'm like oh when we're getting into this internal stuff <laughs> Bailey. 
Yeah, I mean, I I was just actively shutting my eyes anytime I knew an animal death was coming. I have yeah. such a hard time with animal deaths in movies that, like, again, this time I did enjoy it a lot more because I was less stressed out about Sebastian. Like, literally increased oh my, my enjoyment of the movie. Does the dog die.com is like one of my go to <laughs> websites. So anytime, anytime an animal died, I was just like. So I can't deal with those birds getting burned to death. Like, yeah. I know it's like not as visually gory as say like those guys getting a hole blasted right through both of them or the guy getting his head ripped yeah. off. But to me, it was just more like miserable to experience as an audience member. Uh, I yeah. get it. Uh, yeah, I, war I warned Trish if I've seen a movie before her, if any animal death is coming, uh, she needs to know. Uh, uh, as someone who grew up like loving gory stuff, uh, I was mostly just like, Lethal Delighted. So I guess I'd say yeah. my favorite, um, it was in one of the trailers, one of the revenge shows, but the the King Shark ripping the guy in two. Oh also because God. I haven't really, we haven't talked about so how cool good. this movie looks. Uh, and so that's like, you know, that's such a comic book panel. Like he's trying, I think there's lightning striking as he's doing it. Yeah. Uh, and so it's just this kind of over the top, super crazy, super gory graphic moment of a human shark guy tearing a soldier in half. Yeah. Um, although I want to mention this is not, per se a gory moment, but just mentioning kind of how cool the movie looks, how much I love um, when Harley is uh, inside Starro and those rats are floating around her and it's like <laughs> beautiful in the most insane it's, way It's possible. so weird. Beautiful like, yeah. and disgusting and hard to watch, but gorgeous to look at. Like, right. Yeah. The, the girl with like the bleach skin is inside the alien starfish's eyeball. Yeah. And there's rats swimming rats by her. Every and, and it's blood. really lovely, and, guys. And, and blood, because they're like, <laughs> yeah. the rats are like chewing right. on all the synapses in the eye. And yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a crazy moment that I'm like, oh, how pretty. <laughs> and yeah. It's, it's disgustingness. Yeah. The um, the um Gaius Greaves death by by Starro being ripped apart by tentacles is pretty good too. Yeah, <laughs> and it just it was well like, deserved. It's smashed against huh. the wall and it's just guts and gore everywhere. Because that guy oh, was great. a perv. Yeah, I think sucks. Of, of everyone in that movie, that guy really did kind of suck the most, other than Amanda Waller. Like mm, he yeah. got Amanda exactly what yo. He was like. <laughs> I love the scene where the woman hits Amanda oh, Waller so on good. the head with her own golf club. And, and I kind of love that it's one of, she's not as prominent, like no. Steve Agee and that other blonde girl are yeah, given a lot woman. more to say. Yeah. So I kind of like that it's kind of someone who's just kind of been there and is like, enough's enough. And like, yeah. <laughs> just takes her yeah. yeah. And the fact that she calls the other guy a dickhead and is like, get on the radar. <laughs> It's so good. It's okay. And the, I mean, honestly, it's so well set up too, because they establish that she has the golf clubs there. It doesn't just come out yep. of nowhere. Like it's it's all very like masterfully crafted and makes sense. Yep, yep. No, it's such a such, it's such a great moment. Um, so we, we it's been kind of a love fest here because we all really dug into it. Uh, let me do a brief. Is you know, uh, is there area grievances? Is there anything uh, that you know? It can be a nitpick. Uh, if you if you could tweak any little thing, uh, is there something you might tweak? Less bird deaths. <laughs> That for sure. I also, I, I mean, again, I love all the isolated Harley stuff, but mm -hmm. it did feel very isolated. Yeah. I, I loved her interactions with the group. I wish we had more of that. I loved her solo adventure. I wouldn't mm -hmm. change that for the world, but I just wish we had a little bit more of her. Inter it's sort of like my grievance with Birds of Prey, where I love the solo Harley stuff, but I wish we had her interacting with the Birds of Prey a little bit more. In this, right. it's the same, but Suicide Squad instead mm -hmm. of Birds of Prey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my two little things would be uh, just the 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 two post credit scenes that they both are someone is alive. We didn't um, think was yeah. I would have. I wish fair. one of them was there. Like even though they both serve different persons, you know, Peacemaker is setting up his own show, but and Weasel is just kind of a funny it's one. Comedy. That the, the very first character who died didn't really die, and he's so grotesque and weird. But I do think it, one of them should have been something different. Uh, <laughs> And then I do think as, as much as we just talked about how great that Amanda Waller moment where she gets knocked out is, it's like, I have to think she would be a lot more pissed than just sending those two to watch over, especially the woman who actually knocked her out. Yeah. I'm like, I feel like something really bad would happen to that yeah, person. I feel like she would have at least been court-martialed. Like, yeah. So I kind of wanted like, like- a government agency. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like a we, little... we, had, we, were, we were kind of skipping past something there. <laughs> Uh, so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a nitpick, but, uh, I'll still mention it, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah. anything else guys, uh, you know, uh, mainline that, well, I, I'll get into one other I, question I have here, but, uh, I was also just thinking about when, uh, Pete Davidson said, is that a dog? <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. So, 
<laughs> Pete Davidson gets such a great death because whether you love it's him or hate so him, good. I think it like works, you know? It's yeah, like... he's very well cast in this movie. Everyone <laughs> yeah. is very well cast in this movie, no matter how big or small their role is. Yep. 100%. I think yep. I, I, that does sort of speak to James Gunn that everyone kind of wants to play with him, I think. So yeah, yeah. like, yeah, I'll show up and die in a Suicide Squad. Sure. <laughs> Um, so my last question here is we know Peacemaker is getting his own show which I'm excited for just because I thought Cena was great and Gunn uh, is obviously great working with him I do wonder how do you avoid the trap of being like let's redeem him because now I don't want him redeemed uh, mm -hmm. but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it but after this what would you like to see next for these characters is there someone you'd like to see a spinoff of would you like to see just a straight sequel Suicide Squad movie with these characters what, what would you if you could just uh get Warner Media to green light something with any of these characters, what would it be? I feel like I'm cheating because this was discussed during our our watch along, mm -hmm. but a just sitcom, uh, city living comedy mm -hmm. with uh, Ratcatcher 2 and King Shark being roommates, <laughs> A plus. I'd watch the hell out of that. A plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah they're just hanging on the couch, you know? Yeah, that. That. yeah. <laughs> They're great together. I'd also watch a like the office style sitcom about the people in the control oh room my with Amanda God, Waller as some kind genius. of like vicious Michael Scott. And like, yeah, I'd, I'd watch the whole lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wonder because because those two characters at the end who go to the hospital are in Peacemaker, I have a fee I wouldn't be shocked if part of Peacemaker gives you a little bit of that, Bailey. No yes. Amanda Waller. I don't think Viola Davis is in it, mm -hmm. but I still think we might get yeah, yeah, we might get a little maybe we'll get a, a thing because I think that would be super fun too. Um, I'll say, uh, you know, while I would love both those ideas uh for sure, I'll also be super basic and be like, I, I saw Margot Robbie talk about how she she actually thinks it's funny as, as we're talking about Harley, how she thinks Harley kind of works best in these group situations. She's not like pushing for a solo Harley movie, yeah. Um, which I, I see the benefit of, but uh, I'll still say I'll, I'll be, I'll be a fanboy here and be like, give it, give us that Harley and Ivy, uh, you know, know, on screen finally. Yeah. The ones that, oh God, what are, what's the name of the, um, the authors that wrote that Harley Quinn series that, uh, um, that, uh, not the animated one, but the one that Poison Ivy shows up in. The comic book ones. Oh my God, why am I totally blanking? I'm going to look it up right now and then I'm going to, it's going to be great. Um, <laughs> but yeah, because there's this whole storyline where basically like Harley's like, I'm done with all this. I'm just going to go back to uh, being a psychiatrist. And she lives in sort of like a Coney Island kind of situation. And then like all the characters from her past like make their way back into it and there's big there's like storylines with um poison ivy in there as well that are very very good yeah i would love to see it i don't because as much as i love the harley quinn animated series like i don't need to see like a uh that exact version uh yeah. but yeah like there's just a lot of fun i think you can have with those characters and it kind of speaks to it not being like a a Harley solo movie as much as yes. like a, a, a different dynamic. So yeah, it's the um, the uh, Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor um, Harley Quinn stuff, which just, yeah, there's some really, really great stuff in there. So yeah. it yeah. uh, could be very fun. And yes, they uh, and, and they do in that, like Ivy, uh, Ivy and Harley, I just gave them a ship name. Apparently it's Ivy. Harley and Ivy <laughs> I'm sure are some people on Twitter agree with you. Yeah. Yes. And then the fans are the hive mind. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There you go. Uh, guys, any uh, final, final thoughts here on uh, the Suicide Squad? I see it. It's freaking awesome. <laughs> it. It's you just, have literally it's, no excuses. It's, on it's, re it, it's just really so fun. Um, I think that a lot of people have very high expectations for this film from the point of view that James Gunn does have a pretty stellar reputation when it comes to ensemble films with wacky characters. Yeah. Uh, don't go in expecting this to be exactly like Guardians, though. Go in and allow this to be its own thing and just revel in the James Gunness of it all and how much fun everyone is having in this incredibly fun movie. Yeah, uh, it, it just, yeah, it, like I said, I love that it was, it got to be kind of every, everything he's done before it led to this and almost felt like, because it was the superhero stuff, the team stuff, the gross out stuff. Uh, and yeah, he just got to uh, to do it all and uh, wasn't it fun to watch him do it? All right, guys. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining me here to talk about the Suicide Squad. And uh, yeah, we'll be back with more. I think uh, well, I was going to say next week. Yeah, this is going up on Saturday. So why not? We'll be back yeah. next week with plenty more at SJU. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye.